Hello there, in this episode of uh, Wine Fiction, we're going to be talking about the champagne producer Jacques Selos. The producer is located in the village of Aviz in Cote de Blancs and is so far one of the most well-known and the producer of one of the most sought-after champagnes. I am not drinking Celos every day because I cannot. It might not be the cheapest champagne that you would like to get. But it's really good to try these champagnes if you're diving into the champagne culture. The operations in Aviz, in Domaine Jacques Celos, started in 1947, as it says in the book of Peter Lien. You have to really take a look at this book if you are looking for getting deep dive into Champagne. Very good stuff. Very good book, available on web pages such as Amazon. Take a look at it, you're gonna like it. Alright, going back to it. I was lucky enough to visit Celos, actually, and and yeah, to talk about that visit, let me remember. Come on. It's been some months, and it was a really nice visit. Many, many big thanks to Guillaume Celos for letting me to film a couple of short footages. Thank you again, Guillaume, and thank you again for having us on that day. Let me highlight this fact for you. It was not just a random visit. It was a well-organized visit with me and a couple of other sommelier friends and a couple of writers such as Essiabala, Master of Wine or Brett Baker and these kind of uh, wine professionals all together visiting uh, uh, Jacques Celos. The visit was organized by the local importer of Jacques Celos in my hometown, Finland. Hometown, home country, whatever you want to call. I don't think Celos is a producer that you can just randomly walk in and visit. Um, those who know about Celos, you know very well what I'm talking about. So, talking about Celos wines, if you're a beginner, first you have to really understand two things. Number one, you have to understand the deliberate oxidation in wine. What are the effects of deliberate oxidation in the wine? Second thing you should understand is the sherry wine, the Spanish wine style called sherry. Because Solera system, which is one of the most well-known attributes of sherry wine making, is a big part of Jacques Celos's, aka let's say the champagne maker Anselm Celos's success. The success to differ from other producers and becoming a rock star. And what is solar system? Basically, just to shortly explain, solar system is basically having different tiers of wine in different barrels on top of each other, and every year a certain amount of the wine is taken out and new vintage is put in, and by that, kind of a, a continuous, a perpetual blend is made. So during that process, the wines develop some oxidation aromas, and because of that, when you're tasting several champagnes, you are expecting to get Nutty aromas, such as, let's say, hazelnut or, or, or walnut skin. Also, very ripe stone fruit aromas, such as peach and apricot aromas. A very high floral tone, such as yellow flowers, white flowers, and possibly some honeycomb. Honey, honeycomb, which we might be talking more about in a video that we are talking about Tokai. But don't get it there yet. So, when we walked into Celos, to be honest with you, I fell in love with the map on the floor. A map of the Aviz and surrounding villages, which actually Guillaume was using also when we were tasting the wines, showing with his food which parcel is where, which wine comes from, where and so on. I think that's a great idea, to have a map on the floor. Take 
So when we walked in, we immediately went to the cellar to have a barrel tasting, the tasting of the Van Glea wines. So these lines are for the beginners. When, this, when we walked in, the cellar was all covered with the yeast everywhere. That might look dirty to you. You might think that, oh, that's a very dirty cellar. No, it's not. That is actually a very healthy cellar for the beginners to say, this is a very good wine cellar. The yeast on the walls, as Guillaume said, our soldiers. By the way, if you are getting some value, some good information from these videos, please subscribe to the channel and I will keep creating these kind of informative videos in the future as well. Thank you in advance if you already subscribed. Anyway, after the Van Clare tasting, of course, we start to taste some wines. Um, a lot of 2007 vintages Guillaume picked for us and many, many different uh, champagnes. I'm not gonna get into details right now. I don't have all my notes in front of me right now, but we already talked about what kind of aromas and flavors you are looking for, what kind of aromas and the flavors that you can expect when you're tasting Celos. And they are actually quite different champagnes. It's quite an experience. When we tasted all those bottles, I have to say, I never ever tasted that much Celos cuvées, Celos bottles next to each other. That was such an experience. Let me get some coffee. Such a beautiful day outside. Very sunny, lovely. You can see birds flying. Spring is coming. Well, summer is coming. Well, technically winter is coming. <laughs> so, shortly what I could say, I have tasted a lot of different Celos cuvées so far at work with friends or when we have the visit uh, in Avis. I really enjoy all of the wines, like from the single specific parcel of wines called Ludui wines and, and to Initial, for example. But I have to say, I am really in love with the rosé that Celos produce. So Celos rosé, is a special wine that has quite nice oxidative aromas and a lot of red berry flavors. Maybe I like it because it also has a little touch of another producer that I like, uh, Aile Aurier from Ambonne. The very small amount of the red wine that they add inside the wine is coming from Aile Aurier from Ambonne, another great producer. So in this episode, I'm not telling you that Celos is the best producer ever. No, I'm not saying that. Celos is different. I'm quite sure. There might be some people who is watching this video right now and after that buy some Celos and taste and they would not like it at all because it's a very different champagne. But you might also fall in love with it. It's super different, super characteristic, super distinct wines. So all I'm saying is that Celos is different. It has a different personality, different character. The champagnes are very vinous. The word vinous is important today when it comes to growing champagnes. Historically, until today, with the marketing of champagne, people forgot that champagne is actually wine. People think champagne is not wine, but in fact, it's a sparkling wine. It's made with the same methods as a normal wine would be made, and then it goes into the method champagne once, the traditional method, which is the second fermentation happens in the bottle and the bubbles comes out. So Champagne is wine, so vinous is quite a word to use, especially for Jacques champagnes. So give it a try, but if you're a beginner, first understand the deliberate oxidation, and then study and drink a little bit of sherry to understand. After doing all this, when you're having your first taste of Celos, everything will make sense. So if I were a millionaire, would I drink Celos every day? You know what? I wouldn't. I will keep all my Celos bottles for sharing with some special people. But that's me, you might think different. All in all, all I can say is this is a producer that you should keep following. If you have the financial background, or if you don't have but you have some other friends who would like to taste some Celos, come together, pay together and 
have a taste of at least, for example, QA initial that they make. Just do it because that's going to be quite an experience. As I said in the beginning, if you want to learn more about champagne, this is a good book. If you're a beginner and you are having your first dive in champagne, so then this is the book that you should buy and read. Master of Wine, Essia Bellance, Champagne. The subtitle is A Guide for Champagne Lovers and Gourmet Travelers. SC is the person who really pushed me, who really encouraged me to learn more about champagne. So, am I advertising my friend's book? Yes, that's what I'm doing right now. So, buy this book. Before I forget, let me say, these are confusing days. Enjoy more champagne, keep calm, share more moments with friends, and never ever drink your champagne in a flute glass. Do not use flute glasses. Never. Listen to me. That I know. I would not tell everything about champagne, but that I know. Get rid of your flute glasses and start drinking your champagne in a proper white wine glass. Thank you for watching and see you at the next episode.